think, gentlemen, on episode 181 of We Were Gamers, that we would get sued if I said, the emails, the emails, what, what, the emails. I feel like that's a reference I should pick up on, but... Yep. Also. Also? <laughs> nah, me, that should have oh, been a, oh. a, a, a me also. Me also. Got <laughs> it. Got it. Homestar Runner, you guys. That's a relevant and easy to remember thing that people deep, are always talking deep, about these cool. days <laughs> is this where i say okay boomer yes <laughs> this is where you fit in okay hello welcome to we were gamers a podcast about making references to the deep internet and not the kind that gets you thrown in jail uh it's just the old internet just the, yeah i guess it's not deep it's just old <laughs> join us in join us in our wayback machine <laughs> That soon will stop working because all those videos are flash. He, uh, so he does. He's re-uploaded all that to YouTube, I guess. Oh, okay, that's good. Yeah, uh, because you know that guy would be a gazillionaire if he, if it were the modern day, you know. Yeah. All right, that's JJ. Hello, Michael's here. Hey, friends. I'm Andy. We were gamers, a podcast about trying to catch up on life and games. And boy, howdy. Anyway, I said uh, emails because I wanted to get to an email we got, JJ, because it's important. I'm here for importance. Uh, first of all, Alex, who emailed us, you're a crazy person for listening to all of our episodes. Eh, is crazy. he? But we appreciate it. But we appreciate it. <laughs> That's how he started off the, the thing. Is he any said. crazier than us for recording all of them? Um. You're, you know, in effort wise, I guess maybe not, but we're not going to knock the effort of having listened to 180 episodes of us rambling, especially the early ones. So thank you for the kind platitudes. And, uh, I agree that we should make comments on things like net neutrality. However, the most important part of Alex's email is what tipped him to finally write in was... JJ, we must absolutely watch One Punch Man season two. Oh, ah, uh, hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Quote: I can only imagine there's some elitist group out there who decided season two must be bad because yada yada. It's fantastic. You will laugh out loud. Loud. Your time will not be wasted. I mean, I liked season one quite a lot. I can't imagine. That season two isn't at least partway as good as season one, and that would still be good. And having people tell us on the internet that it is good can't be a bad thing. The thing that I heard was that they changed animation studios and the animation was not as good. That's and okay. also, it's not available on Netflix. We that can makes it this. a little harder. But I'm not going to not watch it if it suddenly appeared in front of me. Okay. You know, I'm yeah. not against watching it. Yeah. I will watch it if it's available. It's right. just not instantly available with no work. <laughs> uh, we also got a couple emails about this is an email dump, by the way, about Stadia launching and people asking us what we think. Uh, Michael, do you want to take this one? Um, Google Stadia, I... by the way, in case people missed it. Because, you know, don't have time to browse the internet all the time. Google is launching a streaming game service. It's complicated, to say the least. You don't... It's not like you subscribe and then stream games. You subscribe and then get to stream games, but you also have to pay for the games. So, anyway. There is some subscription you can get, and there are a non-zero number of free games included with that, but it's yeah. not everything. Yeah. I think I think though that that Michael will have the proper bead on this for all of us. Yeah, because I think we we touched on this briefly offline, but I I think it launched in exactly the way that we expected that it was going to launch. They promised all the the pretty flashy things, and those pretty flashy things are still coming, eventually. Soon, TM. Yeah, right. Soon, TM. Yeah the the initial launch does not work in your browser it only works with the chromecast ultra or whatever thing that they sell 
the controller, which is supposed to connect directly to Wi-Fi, actually connects to with Bluetooth. <laughs> and a lot of the games they talked about at their launch event are not out yet. Um, there is one exclusive game, I think, that is launching at the launch, and that's it. Uh, hmm. And the rest are like games you maybe have played already or have played on other places. Do you think they assume that they don't need exclusives? Every company so far has figured out they do need exclusives. Nintendo, PlayStation, Xbox, all those guys. I say guys. Yeah, I, I remind you, people, that uh, we live in California and guys is non-gender. Uh, all these companies have figured out they got to have some draw and I don't see the draw in a service that will likely be hitchy to begin with. <laughs> I see the draw. If all the stuff they had talked about actually worked and I could play this stuff from my phone or my TV or and my I hadn't invested browser, hundreds of hundreds a, of dollars into gaming already. Yeah. Yeah, like like people like us with gaming PCs already are not the target for this, I feel like, right? No. This is ex trying to extend out into the the mobile sector. Or like gotcha. a got a person who has a laptop that is like maybe a few years old and can't really run the sweet high graphics, you can get the sweet high graphics that stream to your browser if you just have a good internet connection. Of course, then having a good internet connection is also a problem uh, in the U.S. these days. But at least, you know, the the people who already own PCs, like, you can just buy these games on other storefronts and then just play them with good graphics and stuff and not really need to worry about this. So, so in my opinion, Google ends up buying. What is the the thing I'm thinking? Uh, SpaceX for their Internet infrastructure. Is that what's going to happen here? we all get internet beamed to the sky from the sky anyway i mean that's cool except latency so yeah i know uh working in a job where i know about latency to space and back it turns out <laughs> that it's long <laughs> there's a slight delay there yeah, yeah. i mean it's... you know hey if, if you want to try and play games with like one to three seconds of latency you do it mm -hmm. but i mean i would rather not yeah yeah in the me in the meantime some 10 year old kid's gonna headshot you because he's got a hard line or you know you crash your drone into the mountain well or everyone disconnects from your game because you're lagging so bad that no one <laughs> wants to play with you yeah yeah all right i did thank you everybody for your emails there were a few of them in there and the the uh the nice compliments thank you i did those in the wrong order jj great michael <laughs> In response to Alex's email. <laughs> yes. What do we got? Have you heard of Gundam Iron-Blooded Orphans, anybody? I actually was looking at that maybe the two days ago in Netflix. I was like, oh, I like Gundam. I would watch this. I haven't seen that one yet. Have you seen... what? Name the Gundams you've seen. Well, I know JJ's watched most of them. So, Michael, what Gundams mm -hmm. have you seen? Um, it might have just been Gundam Wing back in the day. Okay. All right. Andrew, so maybe you have seen less than I have then? I have, yes. Uh, so what have you seen? I know you've seen some of the older stuff. I've seen most of the older stuff through 08. Did you and, see original Mobile Suit Gundam? Yeah, because those first four series are directly connected. Yeah. Uh, so, Michael, all of Gundam from now, from then to now... Is technically connected, right? Eh, right. There's a couple there, offshoot universes. There, well, so the universes that are offshoots are timeline offshoots, right? Right. So, like, I'll explain in a minute why it's important. But uh, the first series was a lot. A lot of series were directly like, okay, that war happened, and then this war happened, and then this war. You know, like cascade sure, yeah. effect stuff. And they were um, gritty, I would say. Not just in the animation, but in the, like, 1980s reflecting on what war is stuff. Okay. The late 70s, even, I think. The, yeah, started. late 70s. So, like, 30 years post, or almost, like, 25 years post-World War II, a lot of Japanese well, animation is like, what is war? What does it mean? How much of a toll does it take on stuff? Yeah. Um. This returns to that, JJ. 
Oh, very cool. So Michael is not Gundam Wing with like crazy pilots and like focusing on five insane suits and explosions like all over the place and stuff. Gotcha. Okay. It's much more in the vein of like the show starts and there are no Gundams. And then the Gundam they do find is a hundred years old. And uh, there is-, is a really great Gundam series called uh I want to say it's uh War in the Pocket is what it's known yeah. as. Mm-hmm. Uh but it kind of encapsulates this like what is the civilians' lives around these people that have these amazing robots and stuff about? And like when they have these big battles in these co- space colonies and stuff, like what happens to all those people who are trying to go to school? You Blown know, up, yeah. So it's like and it uh... focuses on a bunch of kids. Like it, the main characters in those in that series, and it's very short. It's maybe only like twelve episodes or something. Are a group of literal school children who are like twelve. Okay, uh, so. I- Iron it's not, it's Orphans is very similar rough. in that um, it is about a group of Martians who want, don't necessarily, they don't want independence. Like Mars wants independence. And this group of, they have a, a word for it in the show, but essentially like indentured servants, a bunch of people in order to make their, make the living on Mars, sell off members of their family into indentured servitude. Uh, to fight in these like mercenary companies and they fight and it follows one of these mercenary companies who are mostly made up of what we would consider to be kids right like Mm -hmm. kid kids and some actual kids because the hitch of the matter is that like uh you find out very shortly and it's not like a spoiler that uh gundams can only be used by kids because it would kill an adult Yikes. Yeah. Okay. So then you get into the like, hmm, is it okay to be using kids to do this kind of stuff? Hello, Ender's Game. Yeah. And uh, yeah. so there's a little bit of that. And most of the main characters are suck are stuck in like tanks and what they call mobile workers. So, you know, they can just get stepped on by a normal mobile suit. It's pretty good. Well, this sounds right up my alley. I agree. I, I I stared at it because I was like, I can't watch One Punch Man season two right now. But I haven't watched Gundam in a while. And people talk about this Iron Blooded Orphan series as if it were the return of classic, I would call Gundam. So. I approve. <laughs> I will start watching this uh, soon, probably. Yeah. Um, I was watching some of that because I was up late in the evening recently. I don't know how to begin this story or end it, but essentially I wanted to talk about Hearthstone, JJ. Okay. I, I mean, didn't get to play a ton both of it. very excited about this new Battlegrounds mode. Yeah. I didn't get to play a ton of it this weekend. Um, Michael, as you know, there was no home game to go watch for football this this week. Uh, I shouldn't have watched the game that there was, but anyway, <laughs> continue. <laughs> They're talking about Stanford. Y'all. Yeah. Ugh. Are we? I don't think Ugh. we need to do that. Yeah, yeah that's uh, enough said. Okay. Um. So I thought, oh man, there's going to be so much time for Hearthstone. Kids are going to grandma's house. They're going to get babysat. We're going to get in so many games of this new Battlegrounds thing. I was up late watching Iron-Blooded Orphans because my kids were throwing up on me all weekend. Ooh, yikes. Yeah. Uh, I, in fact, was in the middle of trying Battlegrounds for my third game, in which I placed second, by the way, while holding one of them when they threw up on me. And I would like to point out I finished it. That's dedication right there. Hashtag hero gamer right there. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so I don't know that I have a full bead on how this mode works entirely in its intricacies. And I don't know if we want to go super, super into like, okay, you got to sell this before you buy that. You got to upgrade this. But like, there's definitely some discussion we need to have here. Let me quote a Hearthstone designer for you. Okay. Here's a question that was asked on a subreddit. Uh, called Bob's Tavern, that is like some kind of unofficial Battlegrounds subreddit. Which is needed, because I don't care about the main stuff. 
The question is, do the minions you or your opponents have or pick affect the minions that you are offered? Mike Donace's official account replies, yes. Higher Tavern Tier gives you access to higher minions. There are 18 copies of each Tier 1 minion and 15 copies of each Tier 2 minion. And then 13, 11, 9, and 6 going on. Uh, whoa, all the, whoa, whoa, All whoa. the copies of all minions on your tier or below are thrown into a pool, and you get one randomly from that pool. If someone else buys one and is still alive, there is less chance of getting it because that unit is no longer in the pool. There are no other multipliers. It is just those numbers. What do you mean by still alive? They get thrown back in the pool when he's dead? It's, it sounds like if they're dead, their units go back. Okay, so... It's kind of hard to counterpick. No, it's extremely easy. Later someone, in the game, though. Yeah, so very late in the game when there's only two people left, right? There's no counterpicking. You know probably what they have. Yeah. But if you know they need one more Hydra <laughs> to get their last upgrade or whatever, buying a Hydra gives them a worse chance of getting a Hydra. If they haven't already rolled it. I, I have questions about the synchronization of this game. Because I'm often in battles still while I see people upgrading cards on the left. Mm -hmm. Their battle perhaps resolved quicker than yours. So does that mean they get extra timer? Uh, it seems like that would be the case, yeah. Hmm. How does the game know how much to give them timer? Because they can't cut timer short for the people that are still playing. Maybe it's when the last person finishes, that person gets X amount of time. Yeah. You notice the timer doesn't start immediately when the round ends. That's true. Good point. All right. Michael, you got to play this mode, man. It sounds all let, kinds of different and fun. Let me tell you that if you nothing else, you have to walk in and listen to the shop guy named Bob do his best Keegan Michael Key impression <laughs> doing an impression Bob has some really great lines also I have physically shouted not great Bob at my computer <laughs> because of Bob he's like he said, how's it going out there and I'm like Bob I'm about to lose in this next round and, and then eighth right place. as he st you start the next round, he says, I still think you can win this. And you're oh, like, there no, I can't, Bob. I'm was... going to die. There was no <laughs> winning after that one. Um, It's everything I hoped it would be. There's a meta developing, which might not be healthy. There are certain uh, there was actually as we record this, there was a patch released and some cards were changed. Some heroes were buffed and nerfed mm -hmm. a little bit. Uh, and there was a uh, post accompanying that ba balance patch that said, hey, we would like to try and release updates around monthly for this, which, you know, hashtag Blizzard timelines. But, you know, I mean, the fact that they want to make changes quickly is probably good for the health of the game. Yeah, regular cadence, if they can maintain it, is uh, is not a bad thing. No kidding, especially because I think it's going to really revitalize people being in the app. I don't, JJ, you haven't bought cards to get the bonuses, have you? No. Okay. I have. I am using the BlizzCon ticket that I bought uh, and the virtual rewards provided thereby. So I only get to select from two heroes at the start of every match instead of three. Which, uh, let me tell you, seems like a disadvantage. <laughs> it sure does, doesn't it? <laughs> Especially when, uh, now that I've played several matches, some heroes are very bad. <laughs> Even with the, the changes that they made, the buffs to Mukla and Jaraxxus, I am not sure that those heroes are nearly as strong as some of the top ones. Mukla seems like he wants to sell cards a lot. Well, like so now... Alley cats the... and things. It it looks like with the change, I need to remember what the changes were. The Mukla's is when you buy the beast, you get a banana now. Oh. So that's a significant 
increase to him. But Jaraxxus, they just decreased the hero power to two instead of three. So that's um, questionable. He's still kind of bad, and demons are not that great in this game. Transitioning into demon can happen, but you you got to get lucky. Yeah. So the the beast strategy, you know, uh, can be very good if you get the right stuff. Uh, getting a bunch of bananas early with Mukla, if you get like the cats or whatever, uh, like in the first few rounds, could be really strong. Um, right. So that might might make Mukla good, but again, it's hard to know. Um, Toki's thing was also changed to be two cost, and then now it just it's more complicated. But it basically looks like both a buff and a nerf to kind of not. But costing two instead of one is a big deal for sure. Yeah. Um, and they kind of ch- they changed Mama Bear, which I guess you know that card was really powerful if you got a bunch of it, but also like. It's a six tier card. It should be good. It's a six tier card, yeah. And they also changed the six tier mech summoning uh card, which again, like the six tier cards aren't why you've lost the game. You lost the game on tiers three, four, and like the first person to get a really sweet number five. This yeah, the six tier cards help you close out against the top three sometimes, uh, or keep you on pace with the top three wherever you were already at. But the tier fives is really where it's at, I think. You know, like that, if you're going beast, right, that wolf is almost as powerful as Mama Bear. It depends, right? Yeah, like you need a couple of wolves, but the, it's, I don't know. The the Mama Bear is crazy strong if you can get like two of them or a golden one. And maybe now it's like slightly more fair. I'm not sure. I obviously I have not played since the the patch came out. Yeah. Um, Well, anyway, I'm, I'm really liking it. It's really hard to talk about like the nitty gritty stuff without actually like, being able to be like, look, look at this thing, you know, um, and the the thing I'm enjoying the most about it is that it's not just throwing cards at the board stuff. There's a lot of strategy of, OK, I need to buy this because next round buying something is like banking a coin. Sometimes. Yeah, and in fact, there is a hero who literally does that, right? He can like save a coin per turn, yeah, uh, for use later. Um, and there's a lot of strategies like, okay, when to I need upgrade, to, when to upgrade, which minions are good early on, and I mean, basically, the answer is the ones that have tokens are way better than the other ones. Yeah, unless you're building demon, I guess. No, no, that two four is pretty strong. The d- no. The tokens are so broken, dude. <laughs> it's gold. The The token one costs one gold instead of three. Yeah. That's really powerful. So, you know, I mean, like, take those token ones, and then if you want the demon guy, he'll still be there later. Trust me, no one is buying a bunch of that guy. <laughs> That's true. And I guess if they sell, they go back into the pool, right? I think so. It seems like that to me. Anyway, I'm... You know, I, that's how I interpret that post. We should really get that clarified. Maybe we could write an email and be like, can you clarify this statement? Because it doesn't make any sense. At the I con, mean, we were told that it was completely random. So I mean, th- this then is Then again, how... at the con, we were also told spectating would never happen. And day and... one, they patched it in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a- and a- this is how all the other games like this also work. It's a shared pool between all players. It makes sense. Um, but... Knowing that changes a lot of stuff. Yeah. So like if you're if you need exactly this one card to complete your build, it's mm, good luck. <laughs> right. <laughs> so it becomes a lot more about like how can I be efficient with what I see and what I'm able to get, right? Yeah. That explains why there's a lot of mech leapers late game. Everybody's selling them back into the pool. Right. Because basically what you do is you buy that guy, you play it, and you sell it back. <laughs> Cause like why would you keep it? It's terrible stats. Late game. Yeah. I think it's wonderful, and I think that their monetization is relatively calm so far. And Uh, you know, uh, it seems that you can earn gold in that game for wins. You sure you earn if you get top the ten, yeah. So you know, if you do that, and then you play a little bit of regular Hearthstone. I wanted to talk about regular Hearthstone for a second. JJ, you did a bad job on something. Hmm, What? Uh oh. I would have been playing Hearthstone again if you'd told me these quests had been changed so dramatically. <laughs> That's new. That happened only with the most recent patch. My god. 60 gold for playing 3 games? 
Right. So that is the the change that happened most recently. They announced at BlizzCon. The quests now that are 60 gold, instead of used to be winning three with a certain class yep. or certain pairs of classes, are now just play three. Uh, and that's, let me tell you, a lot better. <laughs> that's a big difference. <laughs> no yeah. kidding. You know how hard however, it, certain patches it was to win with? Yeah. Oh, how? yes. I saw the however, though. The, ha- the however is, if you re-roll, you will always get a lower gold quest. Also, the however is, I can't re-roll on my Mac for some reason. Uh, no one can re-roll right now. That's a bug that's being patched oh. uh, today Oops. or tomorrow. Sometime. Oh, okay. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> <laughs> um, that makes sense. Right? Uh, uh, so, but so the thing that you used to do, right, was to maximize gold. You would want to, if you got a sixty, keep it. But if you got a fifty, re-roll it to try and get a sixty, and just keep re-rolling the low ones. Yes, and I don't think it is possible to do that anymore. That makes sense. Um, so if you get the hundred gold or the sixty gold ones, keep them. But you I'm know. in real trouble with Hearthstone if they announce next week that they're bringing in like card back crafting they're never going to do that (laughs) they've given away so many card backs for pre-orders and as special things and all that stuff they're not going to do that dude that's what i'm saying i'm i'm hoping they don't oh well you're you're in luck then yeah because they will not (laughs) Not gonna happen i was just gonna say because the monetization of this is pretty light i know that you and i were just speaking about being at a disadvantage right now because we haven't pre-ordered the next set, which is how some people are getting to choose from three heroes instead of two. Correct. You need to have purchased 10 packs of the most recent set, which as of very soon will 20, be the... 20 packs. Uh, 10, right? You get 10. Oh, is it 20? 10 for stats, 20 for hero, 30 for uh, okay. I had them emotes. Okay, so you need to have purchased 20 packs of the most recent thing, which is 2,000 gold. That's not that tough to get if you just do your quests you know most days yeah every couple days log in do your quest be done with it the kind of what i've been doing in hearthstone for a pretty long time the bonuses stay until the next card set is released and then they're going to do the whole thing again yes so (laughs) you have between every card set to play hearthstone and get 2000 gold or potentially until the pre-order for the next card set goes up oh you think they'll They'll like bump they people could. back down. That makes sense. I hope that's but, you not know, that, the case. Then it would then it would just be the case of you're playing from release to pre order time, which is still you know a decent amount of time. That's usually like a month, more than a month, right? They release three sets a year. So, yeah, it's a good mode. They did a good job. It's polished. Uh, I have a funny story about optimization and it's gonna make you head bang your head against the wall as people that have built your own computers Uh-oh. so my mac <laughs> <laughs> there's your first problem i tried to play this on my laptop on my mac and uh it's not it doesn't have two gigabytes of ram it has eight so it should have been fine and the minute i booted up hearthstone on that computer which i have not done in two years the fans went wild and the computer got liquid magma hot. <laughs> oh no. So I was like, ah, okay, well, you know what? We'll try this out. This is weird, but I don't know. Maybe it's fine. Not only did it do those two things, but after how long do you say think a match lasts, JJ? Like a regular Hearthstone or one of these? One of these. 20 Probably minutes? like 20, 30 minutes, 30 depending minutes. on how far if you go. Yeah. yeah, okay. If you're far in, it's like 30. Killed my whole battery. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Hearthstone is a thing you can run on your phone. That's Tur- not how that works, though. Right. They the the optimization thing they talked about was specifically for mobile versions, not Mac, not PC. No, so. but sometimes you have to do your own little optimization to make things run the way they should. So it turns out that the Hearthstone application can't detect on its own even if you've resized it to run at a lower resolution than your monitor on a mac because your mac forces resolution into this like doubled mode 
basically making the little screen 2K, even though it's like 1.5K or something like that. Uh, and then Hearthstone tries to use hardware hardware acceleration to keep the frame rate up, etc., which causes a lot of heat and then causes the game to chug because the computer's too hot. And uh, even though you have it in a four inch window on your screen, it's running at the same resolution it was when it was full screen. So you have to do some rejiggering. And if anybody needs help with that, <laughs> I'm more than willing to email you all the settings I had to change in and around and behind the application in order for it to just, you know, run normal and not do that to my computer, which it does now. The funny thing is all those settings are good defaults on your gaming PC. Uh, on or off? On. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Basically, every setting you would want on on a gaming lap, on a gaming anything, I had to go in and tell the Mac, like, don't do not do this. And then tell Hearthstone, like, also, you stop it, too. It was like breaking up a little, like, cat fight. All right, fine. That's enough about Hearthstone for now. I think that we should stream it or record a thing. I would happily uh, talk with you about that game mode. Yeah, it's fun. we should do it in front of the game because it's OK. It it's makes fun. more sense when it, you got it makes a lot video. more sense yeah. when you see a video. It was entertaining just listening to you guys before we got started. Oh, yeah, we yeah, that I wish I had captured some audio of that or, you know, recorded it. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be easier when you could actually see what we were talking about. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hey, man, we got a first. That was a We Were Gamers first place. JJ, what's your rating? Uh, let's see. I was as high as like 4,500, and I'm dropping now that people are good. Oh, no. So that's kind of where I have evened out, but I also have not been playing a ton as oh, much okay. as I wish I could. So. I think I've gotten in maybe 12 games over the last week. Yeah, I have like four or five first places, and then oh wow, I forget how I forget how many top fours. Oh, I have a lot of second and thirds, and uh, yeah, today same. was my first first. It's a fun. lot, like very few first places. <laughs> that was most reason. of mine were very early. <laughs> that was the reason I didn't want to give it up was because I was that was my first first. I can't blame you. Yeah. All right. Uh, do we have other games? I. I played Tetris again. We don't need to talk about it. Just go to our Instagram. We were gamers. You can see how that went. They did another event for another skin. So I do those now. They're about monthly. And I have to say, uh, as a person that is getting better at Tetris 99 slowly, Tetris 99 being on the Switch, by the way, we've talked about it before on this. It's fun. I, I enjoy it more every time I play it. But that's about it. All I've been able to squeeze in this week. Anybody else? Uh, slow, steady progress for me at uh, Final Fantasy Tactics A2. My, All right, we got to uh, hear the end of that replay. Soon. Yeah, I'm uh, I'm a hundred and fifty something quests mm. into it. Okay, thank God you didn't say the word I, hours. I was gonna, <laughs> no, I was no, no. going to lose it if he said <laughs> hours. <laughs> I have been doing nothing over the past two weeks except play that game. Who needs a job? I need to play this tactics game. He's no, Veterans think... Day every day. I'm not coming into work. <laughs> I think it's somewhere between 50 and 60 hours. Michael and I both worked on Veterans Day. I... Yes, we did. But there was no traffic coming and going. It's every day as a nice. veteran when you're in the world of Final Fantasy Tactics. <laughs> it seems like everyone's wars. a fighter, right? In those older games, it seems like there's like no civilians. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's a lot of like... Man, that town got trampled. That sucks for them. <laughs> mm -hmm. I uh, had started playing a bunch of Slay the Spire again for no, oh, no. discernible reason. We're going to go do more Slay the Spire. I love it. <laughs> uh, that's not true. Uh, I started playing for a very discernible reason. Was that, uh, did you know there's an Act 4 in that game? I barely see Act 3. Well, that's... Uh, all right, you, wait, hold on. Get, get hold good, on. Hold I on, guess. Hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Act... Are you talking about the map? There are four maps. There are four lights? Yes, there are four lights. Oh. Uh, you fight three major bosses, and then there is a boss optionally that you can get to if you do certain things. The certain things uh, being a spoiler or certain things like I don't check, know, it's like checklist stuff? 
Do you want me to tell you how to get it? Yeah, sure. I mean, spoiler warning if you don't. 30 seconds. Go. Okay. Uh, You need to beat the third boss with each class one time. Okay. And then after you do that, when you start another run again with any of the classes, there will be fragments of a key that you can pick up by doing certain things. You'll have to fight a elite that is marked on the map uh, that... You know, you can get in any of the three acts, but it's a specific elite on a certain path. You have to go there and fight him. Uh, you have to get a piece of the key from a chest in lieu of whatever else is in that chest. Oh, okay. And then you have to spend a rest time uh, at a campfire getting the key instead of using the other rest facilities. Hmm. And if you do all three of those and then beat the third boss, then you can go on to the fourth act, which is very short. And do, has do a boss that is that complete, time? yes, each, every time. You have to get those keys every time you want to do the fourth act. Yes. Wow. It is an addition, uh, a thing you need to do on every run. Uh, uh, it's not that tough. Michael, well, I mean, it is, it's not not tough, but it is doable if you have the right kind of decks that you're making. You like dead cells, right, Michael? I was just going to say, this sounds like some of the things that you have to do in, in later dead cells where you have to like very carefully plan out your, your route in order to unlock something specific. Yes. So that, uh, that is more or less true, right? Uh, in order to beat the third boss with every class, I, there aren't infinite viable builds for each class, right? Like there are some that are very good and then there are some that are kind of like, eh, I had fun, but it wasn't good. Like you, that's why you die on map two, right? Or or in the middle of map three. I mean, to be fair, I'm dying in the middle of map two because I still haven't unlocked all the cards for each of the classes. And so, like you know, you got to work your way up, right? Once you have done all of that, you probably will have learned a bit about the class and what's good and which cards suck and which ones don't and when not to take cards and when to take cards, right? Yeah, a lot less than I thought. A lot less yeah, cards it, than I thought. It, it turns out that skipping cards is the right answer a lot of the time. Yeah, uh, you I, dig Slay the Spire, Michael. I, I really think you would. I, like, I have it. I oh. picked up a free copy, so it's just a matter of, it's of like, finding oh, the yeah. time. To Dominion start and Dead Cells put together. It, this game is a lot like Dominion. Oh, nice. Uh, you know, there's drafting of cards, and it's a big random pool, and all this stuff. And it is a really, really well crafted set for because e basically each character you can pick at the start is a different set of cards. Oh, and unlocking new relics, by the way? Come oh, the relics on. can change a lot, dude. There's a lot of really powerful ones. Well, and they're not even open all the way. I just got a new one called the Peace Pipe, and you can, like, use oh, yeah. the That's fire to junk cards. What? Yeah, dude. <laughs> so you good. Could, so I made a deck uh, for the third character class, the derelict or whatever, the robot, uh, that basically was full of zero-cost cards. There's a, a yellow card for that class that, when you use it, puts all zero-cost cards from your discard pile back in your hand. And then there's another card that costs one that draws four and discards any of them that don't cost zero. But there's a hand limit. No, there isn't. What? <laughs> I've never seen a hand limit. I can have like 20 cards in my hand. I've had so many before. Oh my. Uh, and then you just play all of them again, and then you play the thing that puts them all back in your hand again. Uh, and then you shuffle your whole deck and do it again next turn. It's really, really fun. Uh, if you can make the right kind of like engine, if you guys know what I mean in that term, right? That card game engine kind of thing. Oh, yeah. Anything to like, turn over oh, cards, man. This thing gains six block and draws a card. Ooh. And then this card gains six block and draws a card. And all of these cost zero. <laughs> Yeah, that and you keep thing. gaining block until you find the one card that costs one that does damage based on your block. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. In fact, there are builds uh, for one of the classes that literally does that. It's just like, I have 8,000 block and I deal damage based on how much block I have. Oh, no. And I, I have one copy of that card. I just draw my whole deck until I get that and deal 80 damage. <laughs> Which, in Next. some cases, is not enough to kill a boss. Oh, no, it's not. Yeah, you need more than that. But you have a gajillion block, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> Yeah. And in some cases, you can keep your block between battles if you have broken enough cards. There's some stuff that's really fun. You could do some stuff in that game. It is very possible to get overpowered. And it's really fun, which is the thing that's cool. I agree.
People should play Slay the Spire. It's a great game. <sighs> Lastly, we have to do some streaming news today. Because I have to take a victory lap on JJ. Oh, no. Uh-oh. He said that Disney Plus was just going to be for kids. But they got a kid-only mode, JJ. So I'm right. It is only for kids. All right. Ring the bell. <laughs> done. I'll log off. End the podcast here, everyone. You're done. Yeah. Disney Plus is launching. Uh, by the time you hear this, I guess it will be, have been yesterday. So maybe yes. by today, it will be working. I was just going to say, maybe the servers will work <laughs> the day you hear this. <laughs> Who knows? Today. <laughs> Did, uh, is this the weirdest launch of a thing of all time? Because I don't so, even know how to access it. I wanted to ask you about that. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> www. Where are the movies I want to watch that I'm paying for? Dot biz. I gave you a hundred X dollars to get a three year subscription to a service. You haven't even emailed me an app link to. <laughs> Right. Do you think they just sort of take for granted that the people who signed up early are so excited that they don't need any details ahead of time? Because I have seen I have seen advertisements for this service everywhere. And they're putting them now. on ESPN in the little bottom bottom blurb where they show scores and stuff. They cover the whole thing with an ad for Disney Plus. They did a Mandalorian trailer during halftime of the of Monday Night Football tonight. Did they put a website on there? I assume it's DisneyPlus.com, but who knows? Do I use the plus symbol? Never what if I use yeah, do I symbols? spell it out? Come on. Why not? Who says this is, who? This isn't 1995. You can't do whatever you want on the internet. Sir, <laughs> this, <laughs> this is an internet. Please okay. stop. <laughs> but let me, so, let so me point out Wendy's. something to you as, as a demonstration, not research. <laughs> I missed it. What'd he say? <laughs> I said, sir, this is a Wendy's. So. <laughs> Am I oh. going on an old man rant about Disney Plus? Is that not okay? <laughs> I thought that's what we did on this show. Yeah, oh. that's it feels on not wrong. Not wrong. Speaking of on point, you go to DisneyPlus.com and it has a lot of buttons about signing up and keeping me updated. But I already have an account. Where do I sign in? <laughs> Well, you don't. It's not live yet. There's nothing to sign into. So you think they're just going to flip a switch and this website's going to completely change over overnight? Internet can do that. That's not not I'm hard. I'm thinking that's probably why it, it launches at 6 a.m. Eastern time. Yeah, oh, so that they can man. be awake and ready to troubleshoot the issues as soon as it lights on fire. Right, because if they did it at noon Eastern and the entire country tried to hit the servers at once, aren't you people at work? <laughs> don't you people have phones? I mean, I feel like those two questions cancel each other out. I know. That was, that was my point. <laughs> Disney Plus app. Nope. I checked a couple of hours ago and it's not up yet. I, I, there's pictures of an app on a phone, but they definitely have not told anyone anything. That's crazy to me. Just like the uh, Google Stadia Maybe some of this stuff is coming soon. <laughs> they said they were going to launch with 4K streaming. I would love to know how that doesn't bog down the servers immediately. <laughs> Disney can throw money at content delivery networks if they want. I'm sure how, someone will take that money. How much? I'm sure they're on Amazon, right? This is all hosted I, on Amazon. You, we have no way of knowing. <laughs> okay, but how long? Before Disney and Netflix are both in the net neutrality fight because people are streaming 4K over networks. Disney already owns large portions of Comcast, so I think they're probably fine with it. Oh, no. And yeah. I think oh, no. Netflix has been asking for net neutrality for a long time, oh, so no. they've been in it. I know and, they're in uh, it. I'm saying I was wondering how long it was before Disney we got won't. Disney they're, they're money. They're happy to it. sit back and take their uh, their their discounted rate to Comcast, I'm sure. Oh, and uh, and give us all the rest of us a nice. Here you go, buddy. <laughs> <sighs> I'm really I'm I'm here for the Twitter of Disney Plus not working. That's what I'm here for tomorrow. 
there's a really great Twitter account that tweets fake Disney things coming to Disney Plus. That's going to be so it's good very tomorrow. funny. Right? I I really hope that tomorrow, if it doesn't work, if something goes wrong, they just start tweeting out the whole list of things that the Disney Plus account tweeted out when they <laughs> did that three-hour stream of the lineup. <laughs> Uh, the the Twitter account is at get Disney plus and it is like fake images photoshopped that look like potential like real movie posters, but definitely are not. There's like a picture of <sighs> Willy Wonka and the chocolate factory that says. Bleep you and bleep your kids, too, <laughs> like <laughs> and a bunch of pictures of Oompa Loompas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I'm glad we all had the same thought there. It was just not going to work based based on radio silence. Yeah. Oh, please. But I hope they don't they log in tomorrow. They know they have paid so much money and have so many people out there that want this. They can just not do anything and people will find out. Oh, my gosh. All right. We should go play some more Hearthstone. But who has time to watch Disney Plus when there are all these great shows on HBO out? I've heard. I've heard that there are... Okay, have you watched any of those? Yes. We have a minute. Have you watched Watchmen? Yes. Have you watched... What was the other new one that just launched? His Dark Materials? Yes. Oh, I need to watch, start that one. Should I just all got of us be watching them? The weekend. Yes. Okay. I, I think so. I think Watchmen is really great. Uh, I... Don't know if you are watching that, either of you. I, I don't currently have HBO, though after Iron Blooded Orphans, I was considering it if other people were watching these shows and they were good. I like Watchmen a lot. Uh, it's been really fun. I haven't seen the most recent His Dark Materials episode because it came out tonight, uh, but I'm planning to watch that tomorrow. Man, there's too much stuff to watch. We got to talk about Star Trek here for a second. I know. I made a four lights joke earlier. Uh, it, was a, it was a good joke. It was pretty good. <laughs> uh, it was. I got. It. I think that's probably the episode title. There are four. What was it? There are four chapters. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, two days from this podcast, Star Trek short treks. If you want to watch them, you got two days. To watch four 20 minute episodes before we yes. watch them, before we talk yeah. about them. Yeah. I think I, they're I pretty like good. Harry Mudd. I have watched two of the four, so. Okay. I won't ruin it, but I think I like Harry Mudd now. Okay. Anyway. Star, that Star Trek subpod called Subspace Transmissions on this feed or uh, the YouTube channel. You mm -hmm. can check it out. Mm -hmm. uh, stay tuned at all of our handles for when we do the Popeye's Chicken Sandwich Challenge. Where we try not to get stabbed in line. Yep. That's pretty much it. Where we don't destroy our cars trying to go through a drive through <laughs> <laughs> that's all or or crash your car trying to drive through a painted tunnel wily e. coyote style <laughs> <laughs> did you see that one that was so good did you it's hear about so that good. <laughs> oh man all those things can be found not on our twitter handle at we were gamers if you liked those emails at the front where we said these are the things people emailed us about and we liked getting your email you could do that at podcast at wewergamers.com or on our website there's a little form submission you can go clickety click put your name in there and say the things you want to say and we'll read them and our website is wewergamers.com an email and a real url that you could go to it's really it's all synergized defensive touchdowns because that's what i need are you watching no. this game <laughs> <laughs> oh, hey, my points went up. Yeah, dude, San Francisco defense, 20 oh, points. it's over. Yeah, Seattle's, Seattle's going to kick a field goal here. Oh, no. Although, I thought that about San Francisco at the end of regulation, and Seattle blocked it, so oh, it's an it, would be, it would be a fitting end to the way this week has gone if nobody wins. One of my coworkers was trying to tell me that... <laughs>
oh, this you shouldn't play San Francisco defense this week. They're going to do terrible. The Seahawks are so good. Bruh, look at this. 20 points. The only reason that the scoop I, told, and score helped. I told Katie twice not that maybe picking San Francisco wasn't a good idea was because Pete Carroll does not lose primetime games. Well, who I don't care if he wins or loses, but I, don't I got either. five sacks, saying. an interception, three fumbles, and a touchdown. So I'm he's got I think he's like seventeen and two. Well, they're gonna have to gonna have to run this kick back Your for him to good. 